I loves me some one degree mm, of Chunky B. Ladies and gentlemen, one degree of Chunky B in the garage of love. Um, whatever's happening, I dig. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I smell what you're cooking. Our numbers are going up. And for some reason, you guys are keep coming back to the garage of love. And I know one of the reasons, the executive producer across the table of garage of love, give it up for Gary Adler. Thanks, Chunky. I'll clap for myself. Yeah. Thanks for the warm introduction, and it's a pleasure to be here on a Sunday night, an emergency podcast. Very rare this yeah. time of year. This is a rare emergency podcast. Uh, before we start talking about this awesome freaking guy that's going to be yeah. coming up, let's talk about the website. Hang the on, number. let me just say hi. I didn't cut to myself. You haven't seen... There I am. Hi. How are you doing? Okay, dude, you've got to pay attention to the buttons. <laughs> okay, I know. It's all part of the situation. Here we go. Check it out. Um, one degree of Chunky B, chunkyb.tv. And I swear to goodness, I don't... If you're shopping and you're doing Amazon, say hello to ChunkyBee.tv and just do your shopping through there. Then we develop a little bit of cash flow and we can feed the Wizard of the Knobs. Yeah. It's not even here tonight. He's dumpster diving. Yeah, because we can't even feed him a sandwich. That's a shame. Travis Spencer, you're missed tonight, but let's talk about what's happening. I know. You guys, come on into the garage. Come on in. Settle down. Because what you're about to um, see and hear is, I think, an extremely impressive person friend great musician great great friend to, to, my, to my wife and my, my kids ladies and gentlemen Dave Dryowitz and by the way yeah. we have a bass player hat trick tonight yeah we do That's and and Dryowitz you're way too cute put that microphone down a little bit yes. make sure yeah there you go let me just do this real quick um, hello Dave Dryowitz and if anyone is uh, in the music scene and I'm not talking about the big popular bullshit, but that underlying groove that is ween. I know that you, you know, you boys are not all together anymore, but when you made, you were the bass player in ween, when you would travel around and you were filling houses of, you know, a couple thousand people and they were singing every freaking word you guys were doing on the bandstand, did you think you made it? This is it? To get the honor to join a group like that, with a fan base like that, was it. That was it. That was, that, that was, uh, that was made it. Right, right. But don't you know, <laughs> uh, you know something? I know you're being modest right now, so I'm just going to cut right to the chase and, and, and cut right through your, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your uh, laid back bullshit. Okay, this cat right here, Dave Dryer, was, was, was in Ween, traveling around and setting up theaters where everybody would stand, nobody would sit, and every person yeah. sang every word. Yeah. I was blown away. And I've known that, you know something, you and I were friends even before I, you know, I even seen you with, uh, saw you with a bass in your hand. And he kept saying, uh, Drywitz is going like, oh, Chuck, I'm not sure, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna like us, you're not gonna like this. And then a couple of years later, he's like, okay, here's tickets, go. I was blown away. Right. And then I got to meet the band, and the band came to this house. We had a barbecue on the six fucking weenie. A lot of people don't know that. You, you guys broke up shortly thereafter, but I know I'm talking too much, and you're gonna talk soon, but do you remember? I air? remember a very nice barbecue here yeah, in your house. Right, yes. and you guys, uh, you, you gave me the, the honor of being the double secret sixth weenie. <laughs> nice. It's it, true. Well, Chunky, you know, that was a big secret, and we weren't, you know, we had rich, remember the On the contract. We had? Right, 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 right we had. But, you know, but, you know, sometimes it's water under the bridge. It's water under the bridge. We'll let it go. Okay, check this out, Drywoods. <laughs> you um, you live right over the... Uh, uh, Washington Bridge. Speaking of water under the yes, right, I do. right. See that I live in the great state of New Jersey. I'm proud to say. Right, it. and here's the here's the deals. I'm going to cut to some thickness. And I don't know if you know this, Gary Adler. I am proud to say that Dave Drywood's dad was in a jazz band with uh, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> That my was mom a... was also in the band. <laughs> that, that is funny. That's, that's funny. <laughs> but go ahead. Go ahead, say it. And, uh, and they were in a jazz band with the, with the Woodman, with Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Wow, no kidding. The great. Okay, check this out. Drywood's dad is in a jazz band with his wife and uh, Woody Allen. Right. And check it out. His dad's a retired, like, super-duper secret fucking agent. No was he kidding. FBI? What was he? Well, I got it right here. He, even better. Show me. And he's and if this ever comes back to him, he's really not going to be happy. He was uh, nobody watches. He this was shit. a DEA agent actually. 
After, really? Uh, and, and when he retired, he was like the assistant to Bob Stutman in New York, who was Robert Stutman, who was the big head of the DEA in New York. So what did you do? Did your dads know each other? No. <laughs> no, my, I'm talking my dad and your dad. Oh, because your dad was, was FBI. Officer. He was yeah. CIA, right? Right. FBI. FBI. FBI right. Yeah. Your so you, dad was FBI. Oh, yeah. I it was in my yeah. PD. Which is better? Okay. Um, so you just busted out your wallet and you couldn't even find the fucking thing you were. I had. A, <laughs> That's I a rock had, star for you, people. Yeah, totally. The thing? No, oh. I just I had his business card. It's a special agent to the agent yeah. in charge. Right, get, get, your, get your mouth up to that okay, fucking hello. microphone. Hello, or hello. pull that microphone closer to you. Okay. Adler. Yes. I know we're jumping around here, and I because you, when you're with friends, there's no um, structure. We to, don't have a script, is what you're saying. Well, Dryowitz is when, when we heard he was going to be on. Yeah. Here's my notes for Dryowitz. All right, I'm like, if there's if there's some guy I'm not writing notes for. It's Dave Dryowitz. There you go. Can I tell you a story? Yeah. When we were rolling fat down in New Orleans uh, for Jazz Fest, this you know we roll pretty fat every year, but this is when we didn't have kids. Mm -hmm. And all of us, you know, the main dudes. Oh, you mean the good old days? Yeah. Is that what we're So about? at the end of April, beginning of May, we would go down to New Orleans for two weeks. Yeah. And each main dude uh, rented a Cadillac. Nice. A big fucking Cadillac. Right? You know, all you, there's like four Cadillacs pulling up to the Maple Leaf, going off the Tipitinas. And we were finishing up. And it, you and I were rolling hard during the day at Jazz Fest. And we're going to the Cadillac. Uh, you know, you park in people's yards and you they watch your car and you pay them. It's all a beautiful thing. A couple of my buddies, we lost our ride. Can we get in the caddy? I said no because we're packed. Right. And then I'm sitting there like driving down the street going, I can't leave a member of the crew of Fesshead. Right. Well, I did a U-turn, went back, and we shoved 13 people in a into caddy. a Cadillac. And my double secret nickname for Dave Drywitz, his head, because they had him shoved up. His head was just over the dashboard. That's <laughs> all you can see. There was knees, legs, hands, and it was just Drywitz's head right there. That was the legendary story of the head. I was born <laughs> that day. Ah, head you, was born. Okay, I know you don't want to go in flows, but the reason why I want to talk about what rocks his world in bass, my favorite bass player, George Porter Jr. Yes. But Dryowitz talking. Do, Can we I know, ask well, him if he's known our other two guests, our other two bass player guests? One, Richard Cousins. I know uh, I'm from, very familiar and with And the him. other one, um, Paul Bushnell. You know Bushnell? He's played on every know. I don't know Bushnell. Clean cut, good, well, Irish dude. Yeah. Irish good guy. Played with the Commitments, and, um, yeah. and then now he's playing with uh, Faith Hill and... Uh, What's his wife? What's his husband? Her husband's name? Yeah, that chick. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Oh, that guy. Right. Okay, the guy yeah. who's married to Faith Hill. There you go. Okay, let's get Love let's her. get back on the let's get back on the, uh, the tracks here. Dryowitz happens to be not so much back in the day a Grateful Dead, you know, a Deadhead, right? Which my wife was, and he was like behind the times. Now he's filling theaters, traveling around the country in like the number one uh, Grateful Dead cover band oh, called. Yeah. Uh, it's called Joe Russo's Almost Dead. Why are you guys back in the house? Why are you guys, what, what, what's going on? I don't know, Chunky. I have no idea. But other people do, and they, I, I you know, to me it's, uh, I think we're a really good little band. We play, we like each other and play well together. Yeah. Um, but somebody else figured something else out. But and, we, if, Okay, talk about Phil. Talk about Phil, the Grateful Dead bass player, kicks you off stage well, for three days. No, well, 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 no. The greatest thing that could happen with our band was to have Phil play in the band. What? <clears throat> and um, and Phil plays bass. I play bass. Phil's bass player from the Grateful Dead. So the coolest thing that might have ever happened in my life, besides playing with the great Donovan, is that. <sighs> My chair was my position in my dead cover band was filled in by, by Phil. Phil. That's cool. So pretty weird. Now we did three nights at the Capitol Theater in New York for New Year's last week, and uh, and I oh. went proudly and stood. I felt like a like a proud dad handing out cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's my band. I don't even have to play, and Phil's playing. <laughs> <laughs> who can, who else can say that? Okay, now the rumor on the street is, I, and I saw this on the internet, that uh, when you guys uh, start getting your next groove on, that you will be see, singing 
the lead song of oh. the show, Alabama Getaway. Ch- Is that true? Chunky, that was between you and me. <laughs> All right. Wait. So, we, 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 strike the, can, can, can you strike that from? We can strike that. No, no, so what? It's okay. So what? Let America know that you are going to fucking rock the base. In- this will come out after the yeah. show. And when Chunky yeah. says America, he means um, our four no. listeners. I don't. Hey, hey. Four listeners, <laughs> if you're dead fans. Yeah. Um, I don't sing in this band, so this is a this will be a fun fun little thing for me to do. I've seen you hungry. And not knowing what your next gig is, to you coming to my house tonight, uh, sitting down at our dining room table and, and having dinner with us, smiling, going, "I've got it, you know, I, I've got a little walking around money. That's got to feel good." Well, yeah. It's I'm not supposed nice. to talk about that either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Chunky. Well, can it? Well, that leads me to a question: Can yeah. an eclectic band from the '90s like make a bunch of money or no? Um, I mean, is that a fair question? Yeah, that's a fair well, question. But it, what's, your, what's your definition of a lot of money? I mean, you know, comfortable, you know, where you're not like scratching and scraping and, and there's checks coming in the mail and stuff like that. Mm, well, it depends on your position with the group. I mean, in the band Ween, I was really, uh, the, the band Ween is really two guys, kind of like Simon and Garfunkel mm-hmm. or Peaches and Herb. And Right. <laughs> I thought you were going to say notes. cream. Hall and Oates. <laughs> Hall and Oates. Yeah. And uh, also from Philly, because we guys are from New Hope, Pennsylvania. And um, so, I, I, I mean, me and the, the drummer and the keyboard player, as, as members of the band, we were paid as, you know, side men, basically, mm-hmm. which is fine. Uh, the dead band situation is a little different for me. Cause nice. It's, I'm I'm a partner and it's a real it's a real nice. So you didn't nice have any publishing, no publishing. No, for I didn't Wien. do any writing with those guys. Right. Um, I have my own stuff that I've written and published, but but no, with them it was pretty much their, it was the, the two the two. You were work the for hall and oats as you as you were. Right. <laughs> hey, how do you deal with the babes? I know Monica. I know you're in love with Monica and you, everything's everything's great and you you're traveling around. The, um, dude, how do you how do you deal with that? Uh, what, uh <laughs> next question. Well, next you, I just made you so and look at him. The lady, Adler, look at him. The ladies are wonderful, <laughs> you know. And uh, the great, the great Lemmy of Motorhead, to 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 quote him, you know, in uh, in um, what was it the uh, oh, that that rock documentary he was in the Metal Years. Right. He right. says uh, he said anybody who says they don't do it for the ladies. They do rock and roll. They don't do it for the ladies. It's lying. Damn straight. <laughs> Damn straight. That's why I'm a rock Hell star. Yeah. Um, what's that, That's what's why that? Chunky learned how to play harmonica. <laughs> Where's my harmonica? Uh, okay, what's, the, that what's that document? Not the documentary. That how's TV that show. Going? <laughs> what's that TV show about the, the... Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm paper <laughs> Um The band that goes into a town and learns the, 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 the roots of the town. It's like a rock good swap. Dude? No, no, no. It's is it Foo Fighters? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sonic Highway. Sonic Highway. Yeah. Have you yeah. dialed into that? No, but um, I, I was just visiting Joshua too, my friend who who was who was on the the L.A. version. Dave Ketching has a, a studio out in Joshua Tree, and the Foo Fighters went right. there and recorded on the show. So I just that guy's a buddy of mine, and and he's the greatest guy in the world, and he's got an awesome studio. And the greatest thing to see on TV was him being interviewed on that show. So that people go out there and use the studio, right on. and and find out how great this guy is. So this is an awesome show. Which is an aw- the show is awesome. You know, one thing I got to say about Grohl is he just he he is such a good guy, and he goes out there and he does his thing, and he does what he wants, and he brings out all his favorite people, and uh, and and it's and it's all very positive and beautiful. He's a great ambassador. He is a great ambassador. He really is. He's, he's, he 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 knows the history and the. Yeah. And the roots of the music, and he he treats it with respect and 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 class. Can I ask sure. a question? Sure. Um, Japanese cowboy, piss up a rope. Oh, my dick swinging in the wind. Yeah, you go. Interesting. Those are some of my faves. But I would like to know what Dave's. Uh, you know. Well, I gotta what, say, the gentleman in there, Ben, yeah, was yeah. a producer of that record. Yeah. He ah. produced the Wing Country record, all those songs. Japanese cowboy is my favorite. So. You yeah. should really be interviewing him too. <laughs> Maybe you know something. We might have to. We Gee, might have he's to. A, he's but you were famous. Anyway. The band was famous for one song, basically. Well, m- multiple songs. But when I first moved to LA in '87, 
I guess it was three or four years later when Pushing the Daisy started being playing on, on, yeah. on K Rock. Yeah. And that's Beavis when I got familiar Butthead. with the band. Yeah. Beavis that was and awesome. Butthead did a lot. They didn't like the band. You know, they even <laughs> imitated the band. That's right. <laughs> Beavis, you should be in this band. College music sucks. And then they switched it off. And the funny thing is, like, like they had to hate Ween because they're Beavis and Butthead. But actually, the creator, Mike Judge, huge, huge Ween fan, would come yeah. see us in, in Texas uh, that's all cool. the time. You know? well, what, what is it about South Park? It's uh, not what is it? Okay, okay, maybe you weren't. Beavis and Butthead. We were talking Beavis and Butthead. Right. No, but you know, the, the dudes from South Park. Yeah. Did um I did a, a video, video of, uh, for us? Yeah, right. Were you They're there? Brothers. Yeah, yeah. We were, were you there. were you on stage? Because yeah. you remember when Aaron and I? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, I okay, was there. I was there. I was there. Right, chunky. Yeah, right, right, right. Why do you think you were there? The ding, ding. Uh, <laughs> come on. I know I was. Come there. on now. I got called in. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, but check this out. They do an all day video at St. Mark's yeah. uh, at, at the beach in Venice. Uh huh. Right. Boom. Pounding it out. Pounding it out. And then we go to the rap party to the director's house that was one of the dudes from South Park. Right. So we're at South Park's fucking house that dude, uh, Trey. Trey or, Stone, Matt, Trey, Parker. Trey Parker, Matt yeah, Stone, yeah, and Trey yeah, Parker. Yeah. Yeah. One of those up on the hills, up in a Hollywood. And I'll tell you what, when Ween gets a little buzzed, yeah. they get attitude. I like like their shit don't stink. They didn't give a fuck if it was South Park. We closed the door. We weren't. We you weren't I, social. Junkie, the... I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I think that was. I think you're thinking of a different no, band. No, There was a different director. No, no you're thinking we of something else. We closed the door, and you know, I will let you know, there was a pin, uh, a, a pinball machine, of South Park. Nice. So we're all like out of our minds yeah. right just having fun and then we started getting this vortex like oh my god we're at south park's fucking house playing south park pinball south park's house <laughs> yeah right at that moment and there was other things going on that i will not discuss but it was it, it was kind of an awesome situation it's a hollywood moment it's a hollywood that's what yeah. i'm like. that's what i'm saying absolutely only in they, LA. Especially because yeah. they had the Boogie Nights doors in front of their house, you know? Oh, nice. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, okay, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, the big wood Hollywood doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grenades, handguns, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Let me ask you one more thing, because you know what the executive producer just said? Let's wrap it up for halftime. Let's take a break. No, wait a second. You got to do a cliffhanger. You got to do it. Yeah, lay one on it. Lay one on him. All right. That one time that you were uh, in bed with Madonna. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is one degree of chunky. What? <laughs> I do hey, have a Madonna does. story. We can't so. take a break now. <laughs> Hello, it's Dave Drawitz, and you're watching One Degree of Chunky B. I know what you were thinking, people. Madonna. We're going to talk about the story with Dave Drawitz and Ween and Madonna. But before we go any further, once again, one degree of chunky B. It's uh, the Garage of Love and uh, ChunkyBeat.tv. Keep sharing because whoever is spreading the word, I promise you, you're gonna. I'll buy you a sandwich. Um, say hello to the guy across the table. He goes by the name of Gary Adder, executive producer. Hi, Chunk. Yeah, Hi. listen, folks at home, hit the donate button. Cool. Uh, hit us up on Amazon if you're gonna shop or return those Christmas gifts that nobody wants. Yeah. Just go through our site. It doesn't cost you a dime, and that helps out the show. And now let's talk about our guest to see if uh, if anyone at home wants to get in touch with him or see what he's up to. Dave Jarowitz. Yeah. From Ween. Is. Now he's just slowly taking over that um, jam band. Young hot chicks that are doing ecstasy, sweating and are standing. Are people and still spinning around? Fuck, what are you getting? That'd be a show of his. I think they are. <laughs> really? <laughs> they're doing hula hoops. <laughs> hula they're hoops. Spinning. Yeah. They're, Tendamas. They're raging. And... They're rolling. Yeah. They're rocking. People they're... still do the sticks and all that business. That I don't yeah. know. The, the the devil toy police have been out in a strong way. <laughs> devil sticks, hacky sacks, they're <laughs> disappearing faster <laughs> than you can say. Oh man! But the hipsters are in. Now they have a devil sticks app on the uh, iPhone. No way. Oh yeah, you don't <laughs> actually need. You're, no, you're fucking with us now. You, don't need you get two iPhones. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Digital Devil Sticks. That's my gonna be my new band. <laughs> I love it. Can I be the roadie? D D D. You're in. Yeah. One degree of chunky. Well, G you can be the sixth man. Digital Devil Sticks. Anyway. <laughs> Getting me. good. Uh, where, uh, if anybody wants to find you, do you want to be found or just say well, fucking find um, me on the road? 
I Twitter about once a, uh, every three months, and I'm Instant Dave, and um, yeah. and I'm Dave Drywitz on Facebook. Yeah. And, do you um, um? Do you have any followers on the? I have a few. Yeah. I bet you got more than me. Maybe. <laughs> I can't get over two hundred people. I don't. I don't, know I, I don't do anything, and you know, I do one. I do one tweet, and then I get another hundred requests that I ignore. <laughs> I'm the worst too. If you want to friend Facebook me, you'll you'll have to wait another year because I have like 800 <laughs> pending people that you're ignoring. <laughs> pending, They're, well, yeah, you know I go through. And, uh, hey, who's the coolest person you ever played with? Uh, Donovan. Serious? Why do you love Donovan well, so much? Because he wrote all those great songs. He did. It's, he was like Donovan was like the connection between the Beatles and Led Zeppelin, which are my two favorite bands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Madonna. Madonna. Well, I have a Madonna story for you, Tom. Are you just fucking with You should it? say that. Are no, I, this is a real story. Uh, it's yeah, not really yeah. the greatest story, but it's it's kind of fun. So, C Ween's last year, we, we, we didn't play much. We played a few gigs, yeah. but they were all really big gigs. One of them we played in Central Park, in, in the park, and all day we're sound checking, and um, occasionally a guy, some guy from a movie production from the other side of the park would come over with, with a clipboard and headphones and be like, Hey, listen, can you guys give us five minutes? You know, eventually the, the you know, the guys, the crew running the Central Park, the sound guys there, they're like, hey, you know, we gotta do the sound check. We've had the show booked for whatever. And, you know, and 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 they were like, Okay, so um we start sound checking and we're sound checking away and all of a sudden this entourage comes marching across the field led by none other than Madonna. Oh shit. With like fifteen people around her, all clipboards and headsets. And she comes marching in, and I tap Dean Ween, Mickey Melchiondo on the shoulder. I said, hey, uh, here comes Madonna. And we, the song slowly sums to a crash, and we all stop playing. We all just stand there. She I marches over. Stopped. She comes to the front of the stage, and she goes up to one of the guys that worked at Central Park. Sound. She goes, can I speak to the band? And this guy. This guy. I, lo I love this guy. But I would have loved to have talk to madonna anyway he says with all due respect madonna no and she's what? like right exactly chunky just what i was saying so i don't know why i didn't just jump down off the stage and say hi madonna i'm dave like what can we do for you anyway so so she speaks to our manager greg who uh he says madonna would like seven more minutes to finish this scene can can we give her seven more minutes we're like Anything, Madonna, we love you. Oh my God. And then we're all wondering, is there anything we can do now? <laughs> well, Help see, the situation? Scene from? Like, scene from what? Yeah. What were they shooting? She was shooting a period piece in the park. And I think the movie came out and I couldn't even tell you yeah. what it was called. Huh. Crazy. Crazy. Okay, listen. Oh, okay, that's my Madonna story. Yeah. That's a, it's not that great. No, no, no. It's a, it's a decent. I thought you. It's, it's you, okay. I thought you like, got, got a water then, balloon fight. Then or we, something. Then we started. At least you know, we started road playing. We said, so, so we 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 agreed that if she would come on stage with us and do that like a version, oh my then God. we would stop playing for seven minutes, and then she came out and. We opened with Like a Virgin. We played the whole Madonna set. It was amazing. That's the yeah. story we're then looking for. she blew for. me that on stage. <laughs> <laughs> we did Blow All Night in <laughs> Studio 54 in the 70s. It was unbelievable. It was awesome. Uh, okay, strike that from me. No, no, no. Let's stay in it. Let's stay in it. We can't afford anything. And then we did yeah. um, Chufa Mukti Yoga in, in uh, Soho. No, oh, he's going too deep now. <laughs> I lost him on the yoga thing. <laughs> Drywoods. What um what's in the future? What do you want to what, what do you want to do? I know there's a kind of like a I want to make Donovan popular again. You do the kids. I'd like to bring him back and make and take him on tour and, and bring him back, uh, bring him to the jam band world and introduce him. Like are you serious? Should be. Are, you, are mean, you just making that up? Uh, no, I'm not making this up. So you've thought about this before? Yeah, it's it That's seems to be the idea. hardest thing to do though. How old is it's he? Impossible. I think he's going to be seventy this year. So he doesn't have to go on the road with you. He just like show up every once in a while. I try. I, I ask all my friends at every festival at Bonnaroo, Mountain Jam, whose n festival is named after a song he wrote. Hello, first there is a mountain, Mountain right. Jam, and uh, Bonnaroo. I ask everybody I know at all these festivals, and everybody's like, "Oh, that sounds like an awesome idea," but okay. nobody's really interested in make, trying to. Make I know. It 
But, but see, anyway, you, that's, you, you have that's to do it yourself. You have to do it yourself right. and then you're tell right. people it's cool. You're right. Don't, don't ask if it's cool. Do it and say, guess what? Look how cool this is. If you put Donovan well, in with a jam band. Well, that's what that was the possibility. You know, the promoter of one of the festivals said, well, may, you know, I don't know if we can find a slot for him, but maybe we'll get him up with the string cheese incident. He doesn't even have to be there. <laughs> no, you do a Donovan Jam. A fake Donovan. Well, we just no. It's like a cover band, like a dead cover band. But you do something. I, I, I don't mean to sidetrack. You said Led Zeppelin. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something right now, Gary. Adler. Yes, yes. A couple of years ago, Nancy and I drove deep into Hollywood, Hollywood and Highland, and there's Dave Dryowitz giving us tickets to the. Uh, what was it called? Dread Zeppelin. Bustle in your head, Joe. Sorry. Oh, nice. <laughs> Sorry, chunky. Yeah. So check this out. The place uh-huh. is packed, right? right. It's Dave Dryowitz, right? I don't consider him a musician, even though he's an awesome one. I consider him like a brother, like a you know a friend. I don't care what you know. He thinks he can play the trumpet, but that's a whole other story. Mm-hmm. So we go to this a venue in Hollywood Highland, packed, packed, sweaty kids dancing to his music. Cool. And Nancy and I are the old folks in the back, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. The, I'm the creepy old guy. So I say, fuck it, it's Drywoods. I'm going to make eye contact. And I wedge my way fucking through that crowd. I got Nancy by the fucking arm. Like, We're going to go to the front row. I don't give a fuck how old we are. It's Dave Drywoods up there. And we bust these kids out of the way. They were like fucking licking on lollipops and Xing their balls off. And I'm like, fucking Chunky B, I'm Dave Drywoods. And he's on it. And he looks at me and goes, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Ah. It took me 45 yeah. minutes to get that front of the fucking stage, and he gave me that, oh, I'm busy, I'm a bass player. That's <laughs> awesome. I got a good Robert Cray story for him if he wants to hear that. Bust that out. Make it a short version. <laughs> short version. Okay, Chunky's bragging about how much he knows Robert Cray and how he was on the album and thanked and everything. So Robert Cray's going to play the Hollywood Bowl, and Chunky's like, hey, man, I got uh, free tickets to to uh, Robert Cray at the Hollywood Bowl. Come with me. Let's go make it a night. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Let's do it. He's like backstage, blah, blah, blah. We drive there. We park, and uh, they don't have our tickets. <laughs> so Chunky's, worst Chunky's yeah. getting all irritated, right? And all of a sudden, we're, we're the guy with the guard, he's like, he can't find the tickets. And all of a sudden, the van pulls up. Chunky's like, oh, there's Robert Cray. I got this. No, <laughs> no problem. Robert Cray gets out. He gave him the one arm sort of like look, look, away. look away hug, <sighs> right? I haven't seen the guy in five years. I used to live with him. I, I know more secrets about Robert Craig than he can remember. Right, so cut to, we finally get our tickets. We're in the nosebleeds, and Chunky's like, this is it? This is my relationship with the band now? This is where I, this is, fuck it, Adler, let's go get some beer. So we went, <laughs> we went down and got some beer, and while we're in line getting beer from about 20 yards away, Chunky B, is that you? Chunky B, is that Chunky B? And Chunky B turns around, the guy's like, oh, I love you, I'm Craig Ferguson, I'm a big fan. And Chunky looks at me and goes, you see Adler? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care where I sit, I just want to be noticed. That was great, I want some man. attention. It was a great concert, though, and we did go it backstage. Was, it was, was it, that it the, the real Craig Ferguson? The real Yeah. awesome. You writing songs? No, I don't really write songs much. You but uh, I, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I, I I do a little something here and there. I wrote a song for fracking against fracking. Do you know what fracking is? Yeah, fracking's when they uh, stick pipes under the under the shale to get natural gas, and they've been they they really destroyed Pennsylvania. So there was a whole thing of them trying to fight it in New York, and we won actually. There's no fracking allowed. Uh, Cuomo passed it. And so you wrote was, a song about but it? But I wrote, me and Marco played this great song for a benefit record that was going to have all, all Pete Seeger and all these people, Ani DeFranco, all these people against fracking, keep fracking out of New York. And it was called Don't Frickin' Frack. Nice. No, don't let them frickin' frack. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, Drywoods, listen to me. That's the last song I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> um, first time I got turned on to your music was Tiny Lights. I still think I have your album somewhere in the house. We made like eight. <laughs> 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 Listen, all you got to do is just Google Ween, man, and you get all the cool shit. Yeah. It's all over, man. It's awesome. I'm the six weenie, dude. I miss that eclectic music from that from that era. I really do. You know, Drywitz is the eels of... and all that, man. I fucking I miss that. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. I, I'll tell you a story. How about... um. Uh, 
Primus sucks, right? Right. Primus. If you go to a Primus show, you say Primus sucks. Mm -hmm. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. So I got my new buddy, um, Les Claypool, right? He's a buddy of mine uh, through a buddy. I couldn't even tell you a song he sang. Right. I swear to God. I knew him from exterior sources that I'm talking too much already. So I say to him, hey, dude. You need to play Jazz Fest. And he's like, no, not a chance. I know what you guys do down there. I'm afraid to go down there. <laughs> this is Les Claypool telling me that he's not going to go to Jazz Fest. Two years later, he's with he's, the Jumping Frogs fucking thing. What's what, what's this? Oh, the Frog Brigade. Yeah, awesome. Yes. And, and, then, and then he's like, what's happening? Is Adler, I want you to look at me in the eye. Yeah, I'm looking at you. What's happening? Dave Drywoods has got his finger on the pulse of what is really cool and it's semi jammy yeah. it's semi funky yeah. it's semi you know want to be donovan but it's going all in the right direction and drywoods we're about to put a bow on this and i love the fact that you sit in my garage scratching the bottom of your foot and then <laughs> <laughs> and waiting for another glass of wine <laughs> guilty as charged yeah. <laughs> I just love the fact that uh, you know at any moment we can have a guest on this show because of of the people of your Rolodex basically. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And by the way, you still have a physical Rolodex, <laughs> at, ladies and gentlemen, at home. And my day planner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. My, What's wrong with you guys? I have all those things and cassette tapes. All right, you want? I'll take it one more. My file facts. Oh, you got a file facts. Ooh. Nice. Nice. I tried to page I don't you know today. Oh. <laughs> No, you didn't. Uh, hey, wait, wait, uh, hold on. Oh, Nobody no. can see this, but this is my phone. Yeah, we can see oh, it. Oh, look at you. You are old school. Oh, man. Look that's, at Drywoods. Look at that. It's like a tricorder <laughs> on Star Trek. Totally. Check this out. Beat me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving her all oh, she's got. Of my fear. No. <laughs> Stun guns on whatever. Yeah, set to phase. Okay, listen. We gave it a go. We had Drywoods. Um, you can see that uh, we had a couple safety meetings. Uh, and the uh, white wine was flowing, but Dave Drywoods do not hesitate to dial into his world. Sure, the springboard is wean, but the, the the pool of music that he swims in is is delightful and it's welcoming all year round. Dave Drywoods, thank you for being in the garage of love. Gary Adler, thank you for being the executive producer of One Degree of Chunky B. Thanks, Chunky. And I want to let you know, do yourself a favor. Hashtag Chunky love. B <laughs> dot TV. I was just, I was just gonna was just get emotional. <laughs> you know for a fact we are D O N E. Thank you, Drywoods. <laughs> Bam. Thank you.